What's going on guys? Today we are going to jump into our 2020 video for stop number two of the Fisher of Men on Lake Hartwell. I'm gonna go into practice, what worked, what we patterned, what didn't work, just go through the tournament conditions, best lure setup or our top lures for the day, where we finished, where we stand for the season. So everything about stop number two of the Fisher of Men tournament on Lake Hartwell. So I'm gonna start today by going into practice. So I'll go practice, then the tournament, and then where we stand today. So that's kind of how I'm gonna break this up into three sections. So starting off, ended up going up there to practice on Lake Hartwell with my buddy Tom a little bit before the tournament. Uh, we had a full day up there. The conditions when we were practicing were cloudy, pretty cold. I think temperatures were in the 40s, low 50s. A uh, little bit of wind, nothing crazy there. And I hadn't been to Lake Hartwell since last fall. So I think the last time I went there was last October. So you're talking, you know, three months of not being up there. Things completely changed. Couldn't really build anything off of that pattern. That was more, you know, top water swim baits. This is full blown winter pattern. So I went into the idea. And again, you guys know that my home lake is Lake Lanier. And I went into it, approaching it kind of the same way. Hartwell fishes very similarly to Lake Lanier in terms of just how the lake sets up, where the fish position, uh, depth of lake, it's got rock, it's got ditches, it's got some timber, you name it. It's kind of, it's very similar, very, very similar, just has a lot more largemouth, which is always fun. Always gotta love that. So went up there expecting it to be full-blown winter pattern and upon arriving on the water, it was 48 degrees. It was either, it was 48 degrees or 49 degrees, so super cold. And immediately, if you guys went and watched my practice videos, I told my buddy, uh, Tom, that I expected there to be a ditch bite. I mean, classic Lanier, again, 48 degrees, water's still super cold. I expected them to be in winter patterns. So that was kind of my progression is start from the full-blown winter patterns and then move all the way until we'll call it spawn pattern, which I knew they weren't gonna be there. I, I definitely knew they weren't gonna be there, but knowing where we were in winter time and then where the fish are going, I knew I could intercept them somewhere along that path. And that's kind of a great way to break down a lake is either work backwards or work forward. So in this case, I was working forwards, again, winter pattern going towards the spawn pattern, not expecting that to work at all. And so that's where we started. We started off in a ditch or actually a few ditches. We looked at anywhere from, I graphed around a little bit, all the way from you know 60 feet and in. I think Hartwell sets up a little bit shallower than Lake Lanier. If I'm being honest, I didn't really see a lot of bait or fish beyond the 40 foot mark where on Lanier, especially in the heart of winter, they definitely can be out in those depth ranges. So we started seeing bait in about, I would say the deepest was about 30 feet all the way back to 15 feet. So again, a little bit shallower, but still in the ditches, just like Lake Lanier. And if you guys don't know what a ditch is, go ahead and watch this video right here. I made a, a video a while ago and it goes in depth on everything you know about a ditch. So you're gonna hear me talk about that a lot today. If you don't know what that is, check out that video. But we started in those ditches and we saw bait, we started seeing fish, we started getting bit uh, by small fish. We were just throwing, you know, swim baits and shaky head, worm, your classic ditch stuff. I mean, nothing crazy there. So we started off throwing that and we started getting bumped. We started catching, you know, we caught a couple little dinks. I didn't put those in the videos, but nothing that made me say that that's where the fish were. We ran a few ditches and I think only one of the ditches that we ran even had bait and fish in it and saw some stripers, some hybrids down there, uh, just schools of them and just not a lot of bass, not what we were looking for. So from there, we transitioned and I said, you know what, maybe if they're not completely in the ditches, maybe they're just starting again, their goal, all these fishes, all of these fish goal is to move shallow to spawn. That's where they're going. They're not there now. That's where they're going to go. So if they're not in the ditch, my, le my next logical progression was to go points and or docks next to the ditches. Cause again, they're gonna pull up shallower or again, pull out of that deeper water and they're gonna be moving to the back of the creeks. And you know, that's why they'll set up on those secondary points or main lake points. So that was kind of our next progression. 
and if you guys watch the practice video it started to work out very well so we started with that uh, we, we fished docks for a little bit we started catching fish under docks in normal ditches so again I would look at a ditch that I would think they were in and then I would move up to those docks and I would fish the docks from let's say 35 40 feet all the way up to 15 and eventually we started to figure out that the fish were in a depth range of anywhere from I'm gonna say 20 to 30 feet was kind of the range that we narrowed it in for that dock bite and we started catching some more fish as you guys saw in those practice videos so that kind of you know it's like all right so they're they're not in the middle of the ditch they're kind of up on the sides of them let's go check points and again that's where we went next we started throwing baits like I said still Kai Tech underspin uh, swim baits underspin my buddy pulled out a blade bait, which was kind of a sneaky little deal. And he ended up catching some good fish on that out on those points. And we started running points with brush. That was kind of one of the things that I wanted to focus on. Again, being from Lanier, just wanted to check it all out. Any sort of structure or cover out there makes it just that much better in my opinion. So we started looking at those secondary points and main lake points that were towards the mouth of the main lake. Just again, those fish are gonna be coming in and as they move towards the back of the creeks, they're going to stop on those points as kind of like stop signs to wait and feed. And then they're gonna keep jumping back as the water warms, continue, continue to move back. So that was kind of the progression in my mind of where they were going to go. And so again, we started catching fish and then you saw, you know, our midday report, it was kind of tough. We were kind of just junk fishing. We had fished, you know, the ditches, we had fished the docks, we had fished the points. And then from there, we took an evaluation so we realized that the fish we were catching on the points at this particular time again this is a, you know the, right before the tournament and those fish were smaller on average than the fish we were catching on docks so we were catching anywhere from you know two and a quarter pound fish to three pound fish under docks and then we were catching you know pound and a half fish to two and a quarter pound fish out on those points so we made a decision after lunch of, of that day of practice to say, hey, you know what? Let's go commit to that dock bite. And it was very specific in that 20 to 30 foot range. And we started running that. And as soon as we did that, guys, we started seeing fish. We started catching fish, as you guys saw. So we ended out the day super fun, caught a ton of fish. And I mean, I think we caught probably, you know, 15 fish for the day. Again, first day being back, not bad at all. We didn't have huge weight. We only had 12 or 13 pounds. But considering we had only fished that dock bite for probably half the day, we were pretty confident that, you know, we could repeat that when we came up for the tournament. So that was kind of the progression we had. If you guys haven't watched those videos, go out and check them out. Uh, I'll link those here as well. Those practice videos were pretty fun. Again, anytime you go to a new lake and break it down, you have no idea where to start. Generally, no idea where to start. No ideas what lures they're going to eat. No idea how those fish are going to be set up because every lake is different. So I think that's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a cool challenge to break down any lake. And on Hartwell, again, some of it is us just met the talking through what we think is going to happen. And then some of it is, you know, us putting all the pitch, uh, pieces together to build that picture out for what we were going to do on tournament day. And again, second half of the day was way more successful than the first half of the day. So hopefully you guys enjoyed those practice videos. Now we materialized that bite. And again, we were fishing under docks. I didn't tell you specifically what we were fishing yet because I'm going to jump into that uh, for tournament day or actually you know what let's jump into it right now i'm going to give you guys our top two lures because we kind of built on that from practice so number one for us out on the points and over brush piles uh, was the underspin and when i say number one in terms of lure this was not our most consistent lure but it caught us a few fish for sure so we would roll these this underspin under docks either on the bottom or slow rolled and we'd catch a couple fish that way. And then same thing with the points and over brush piles, we'd slow reel it over brush piles and then drop it down on the bottom and slowly creep it and shake it. And we'd catch fish like that. So we caught a handful of fish on that. And then, as I mentioned, my buddy threw the blade bait in practice and he caught a few fish on that. But by far our number one top producing bait in that practice day was the Nico rig. 
So the Nico rig is just a, it can be any bait guys. I mean, my buddy threw a Nico rigged craw, but a Nico system is basically a worm. And I like the Senko. It's got a weight in the head and your hook is wacky rigged up towards the middle of the worm. And I'm gonna go into more on depth than that. I'm gonna make a whole separate video on the Nico rig and you know, what it is, how to fish it, where to fish it, what line, uh, what line, what rod and reel, all that stuff. So you guys stay tuned for that. But by far our best bait was the Nico rig. And so what we did is again, then we come back uh, uh, sometime later for practice day number two. And this is with my actual tournament partner on Friday afternoon. We got out Friday afternoon, tournaments on Saturday. So we decided he had got up to the lake a little bit before I had, um, but I met him there for that afternoon to fish. And then we started building on that pattern, that dock bite. And we just went and started running and looking for as many docks in that 20 to 30 foot range as we possibly could. And sure enough, we started, as, as soon as we started finding those docks, we started seeing fish, we started catching fish. And right before the tournament, you don't necessarily want to beat up all your stuff. And so we weren't even really fishing that hard. And just to share this with you guys, this is not at all how we want this practice day to go right before the tournament, but we started catching some big fish. I didn't have any of these on film, unfortunately, but you guys can take a look here and I'll, I'll show you guys the pictures of some of these fish. But all we did is I was flipping around this Nico worm every once in a while a few fish here and there that we saw and it seemed like we couldn't do any wrong i mean it was crazy we didn't even fish that much like i said we more just ran around but the first fish i caught was like a six pounder i mean it was it was crazy right under those docks we're like all right we got this bite dialed we kept trying some brush piles in between and some points and we really weren't seeing it and so we ran those docks and the next dock we show up to it's like a three pounder you know, three and a quarter. And we're like, all right, we're done. We're not fishing the rest of the day. No more. We kind of know what we need to do. We just need to go look for a bunch more docks. So I think I fished or, or one more for that. And again, none of this was on video, but I'll show you guys a picture here. But then the same thing under a dock, we caught like a four, four and a quarter, something like that. I mean, another freak fish. And it's like, oh my goodness. So we ended up, I think we only caught five or six fish that afternoon. And we, again, we weren't even trying, but we had like 18 and a half pounds. It was like almost 19 pounds. So we were like, all right, we're good. We know what we're doing. We, we went and just found a bunch of those docks in that perfect range that we wanted. And then we were pretty good, you know, again, going into tournament day, we had our set, you know, we were set. We knew what we were throwing. We knew where we were going. We had a bunch of place, li places lined up and that was that. So that's practice. That's to kind of run you guys through all of practice. Now, tournament day, it was cloudy. It was pretty, it was a little bit windy, nothing crazy. We were supposed to get rain in the afternoon and it was kind of those same conditions. So uh, that, that Tom and I fished and we only had 13 pounds. So we probably should have kept that in our minds a little bit, but we were pretty confident that we, I mean, we had so many fish under those docks. I mean, it was unbelievable. So we started running our pattern and we started off, we wanted to try and run some brush piles early just cause to, to let those fish set up under the docks. I don't think it mattered. I think those dock fish were there all day, guys. If I'm being honest, again, hindsight 2020. Uh, but we started, and if you guys watched the tournament video, if you haven't, I'll post it right here. But if you guys saw in that video, you know, we tried some brush, we tried some points, and it just wasn't working. We caught some striper, but there were some fish out there, but they were just not committing to the moving baits, where that was the, you know, swim bait or underspin. We probably should have just committed to that dock bite all day, which we did heavily but we should have probably taken that, that you know conditions changed a little bit and they weren't eating some of the moving baits. So we picked up the Nico rig, as I mentioned before, and we went to work on these docks. And guys, we saw hundreds of fish. I mean, we had everything lined up. They just would not eat that Saturday. So I don't know what it was. I don't know what changed specifically. Again, the conditions were about the same when Tom and I fished and we had no problems catching them. So I don't know why they shut down but we grinded. I mean, we absolutely grinded. I think we don't, we didn't even have a limit of fish until about noon, which I mean, that's a lot, a large part of your day. And it was just a grind, you know, we weren't spinning out by any means. We fished really well and we knew that's kind of what we, that's the only bite we had found. We had tried a number of different things again in practice 
and that was the only thing that worked so we knew we had to commit to it so after noon we started catching some more fish we started figuring out which docks specifically had the most fish and the biggest fish and we started just running those docks in a loop over and over again and ultimately it worked out pretty well i mean we caught our biggest fish of the day my tournament partner chris he ended up sticking a four and a half pound spot right at the end of the day to you know get us up to our final weight so check this out So that was pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, I mean, we were freaking out. I, I, that was really neat, especially for how difficult the day had been throughout the entire day. And for us to catch that fish, you know, with an hour or two left, it gave us confidence that, you know, all we needed was one more. We went into this thinking we needed 15 pounds to get a check and man, we were spot on. That's I think what it took uh, to get paid for this tournament. But super cool fish that was, that was a really good one we ended the day with 13 and three quarters i think so not crazy on weight not the biggest weight but we finished out of 32 boats we finished at 12. so very pleased with that there's some very good uh, fishermen on this particular trail and to be you know number 12 out of 32 boats is not bad at all especially when it's not even your home lake i mean ultimately the goal is to win but honestly, any top 10 finish we get on any one of these lakes that's not our own will be a fantastic finish. It'll be great for points and it will, you know, allow us to be in contention to go to regionals and potentially nationals. So that's the ultimate goal. So with all that said, I will jump into, like I said, the, the two baits that worked best for us on tournament day. I think we caught one fish on the underspin. That was it. But this is a, just to give you guys a, a real quick rod and reel. This is a 7.4. This is a 7 one to one reel, 10 pound line. And it's a medium, you know, medium action rod. So that was the underspin setup. You don't really need to worry about that. I think every fish we weighed in was on the Nico right there. So my setup for this, this is a G Loomis. 852.71 is a medium power rod and I rigged this up with 10 pound braid to an eight pound leader. If I were fishing around heavy cover, which we weren't in this particular case, I would jump up to probably 10, maybe 12, depending on what that cover is. That was my setup for the Nico rig. I use a one aught Gamagatsu, you know, drop shot hook or just open hook, whatever you want. You don't want to need a weed guard though. So I had lots of problems throughout the week with a weed guard, like hooking up with fish. So I ended up cutting the weed guards off of my hooks because that's all I have. I didn't have any without weed guards, but that helped tremendously with my hookup ratio. So that was kind of the setup there. I use a Yamamoto uh, Senko, just the regular size, just a band. Not my favorite there. And then the size weight I used was 3 sixteenths, I wanna say, or an eighth. So those were the best two baits for us. Again, there was really only one. I mean, if I'm being honest, there was only the one bait that was the, the best for us and allowed us to finish, you know, 12th out of 32 boats. Again, with 13, I think we had 1376 was our final weight. And one big fish, again, that four and a half pound spot. So that's kind of how the tournament went. It was a grind. I was very happy with how we finished. That big fish at the end definitely saved us. I don't know what it was, guys, but that day before when we had three of those big bites, I don't, and they were all largemouth. I don't know where those largemouth under the docks went. I don't know what changed the following day because it was pretty much the same conditions. Nothing had changed, but those we just never ever got a largemouth bite ever which in practice like i said without even trying we had those three big ones on friday and then tom and i prior had 
I think two or three large mouth that were, you know, right at three pounds. So any one of those would have helped us. I mean, we had a couple like right at two pounds that we weighed in. So nothing big at all. I think we had a bunch of, you know, two, two and a quarters, two and a half, and then that one four and a half. That's, that's our, was our bag. So hindsight, we did talk to, we know the guys who ended up winning. And then we know some guys who did pretty well as, as well. And they were saying that they caught a lot of fish in the ditches, you know, just on the bottom with an underspin or a Kitek in about 25 to 30 feet of water. So we had the depth range right, particularly on that day. I guess those fish backed off from the sides of the ditches back into the middle of the ditches, which is maybe where we could have adjusted. But they only had, you know, 14, 15, 16 pounds. So not much bigger in terms of weight. I felt that our pattern, I feel like we did the right thing. We swung. We wanted the win. We went to try to get the win. And again, if we get, you know, even some of those bites that we did in prior practice, then, you know, we're working on a, you know, 17, 18 pounds and a chance for the win. Now, ultimately, I mentioned we know the guys who won and they ended with 20 pounds. They had a ridiculous bag and they ended up catching all of their fish on a crankbait. So we probably should have taken a look more at rock we had done that in practice we did it a couple times maybe not devoted the amount of time that we should have to checking out that stuff but that's what they ended up doing and i don't know where they were on the lake i have no clue it pro i don't know i'm gonna say if i had to guess it would be up above mid lake we went down south we were pretty close to the dam for most of the entire tournament and that's what worked for us. Again, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very pleased with where we finished. We, you know, top 12 finish out of 32 boats, not bad at all. In terms of points, we dropped from fifth in points to fifth. So we ended up staying the exact same, which is fantastic. So we're fifth in points out of 32 teams going into our third tournament of five. So if we can keep doing well, guys, we'll be able to, you know, finish at the top of that point system, which just ultimately that's a better in my in my opinion that's a better gauge of how well you do throughout the season is how well you finish in points because it's not just stacked on one lake it's you know throughout the entire year so that's a very a cool thing we're definitely going for it uh goal number one is to win a tournament goal number two is to get you know angler of the year and finish number one in points so both of them are still entirely possible and i'm super excited for that so for our next tournament we are actually on lake russell which is right below Hartwell. I have personally never, ever been to Russell. So this could be, this is the one my turn, tournament partner and I circled in terms of our wild card for the year. We, he has fished it a few times. He's never done well. I have never fished Russell in my life. So it'll be a very interesting tournament to say the least. I'm sure it fishes very similarly to like a Hartwell or a Clark's Hill to some degree. I've heard, you know, it's got a bunch of spots in it and all that. So we're going to approach it just like we do every other tournament. We're going to try to figure it out, break down the lake exactly like I did with Hartwell, start where we think they are. And if they're not there, kind of work towards that spawn and intercept them in one of those areas. So we're going to break it down the same way. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and learned something. If you guys are, are local to Hartwell or if you fish Hartwell often, let me know guys, what should we have done different for this time of year? Our tournament was the second week in February. Just post down in the comments below. I'd be real curious, you know, give me some advice or tips. I'm not asking for, you know, all your secrets or everything, but maybe say, you know, hey, this pattern might have worked or hey, this color normally works this time of year or hey, you know, stay mid south or north, you know, up the rivers or whatever again these are all just very generic statements to help you but again i'm always willing to learn and, I, and that's why i'm doing this is to help you guys learn from these tournaments and these different lakes because i'm learning every day as well the ultimate goal is just to get better every single day and that's my goal with you guys is to help you guys get better every single day and that's just again that's my goal as well coming away from every lake is to that's why i do these videos is to break down you know what we did right what we did wrong we went into that obviously we didn't win so those were our wrongs and then we caught you know we caught some big fish and unfortunately a lot of them just weren't in tournament day so i think we did some things right and we swung and it just didn't work out so you're all caught up that was fisher of men georgia north division stop number two on lake hartwell that's my 2020 video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Drop a like down below if you did or learned something. Subscribe to the channel and I will talk to y'all soon.